G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru, and today we've got a demonstration in Revit and Dynamo. Um, we're looking at how to change the interface colors, in particular the background, um, just to explore a different color scheme, a popular question I receive as well. Um, but coming soon, um, this is going to be quite a quick video because I'm currently working on a three part series. Um, which deals with uh, Dynamo script logging, uh, how to put them together and then how to visualize them into a report. A little bit like um, you can see here. So qu quite an exciting series and a few people have been requesting it and waiting for it. Um, so that's what's coming next week. Anyway, so let's move on to looking at changing the background in Revit and Dynamo, as well as other minor color changes. So I guess you can ask why, uh, why does it matter? And um, one thing is optimization. Um, there has been study into the optimal color schemes and typically the conclusion is that a soft contrast and a good readability are important to have. Uh, maximum contrast has actually been proven to strain the eyes. Uh, black backgrounds and white text aren't necessarily a good scheme because the eye will focus on the background more than the text. Um, so black text on a white background is okay, but they're looking at other schemes as well, such as a blue and blue and tan, for example, which is a lot softer on the eyes. Um, but ultimately, it's really preference. Um, I know a lot of AutoCAD users that have found Revit a lot easier to use when I've changed the background to black for them. And also people that use coding programs, their eyes are very used to looking at a dark screen in a dark room. Uh, so sometimes to use a white program can be quite jarring and it can offset their sleeping rhythms, lots of things like that. Without further ado, we'll actually go into Revit first, and we'll have a look at how to change the colors. So by default, I'm just in a um, in a sample model here. Um, so at the moment, this is just a white background um, with black lines. Um, but if I go up here into my options menu, I can go to user interface. And the first thing I can do is I can change my color scheme to dark instead of light for my visual experience. And note that my ribbon is now toggled to gray. Um, it's a very minor change, um, but it's one that makes a little bit of a difference. But the one that we really want to look at is under graphics, um, and this is the, the sweet spot. So here you can change the background in Revit and also selection colors and alert colors. So when something's causing a warning. So let's say we want to make our background black. And we'll make our selection color, uh, let's make it yellow. And our pre-selection can be orange and our warning can be red. So as soon as we OK that, you'll see that our color scheme looks a lot more like AutoCAD now. Um, you'll notice that black lines became white lines, um, whilst color retains its settings. Um, so it can be a little bit jarring depending on what you're used to. Uh, but at the moment it's quite, um, quite dynamic and easy to read, I think. Um, so obviously you can see my pre-selection and then my selection. And then if I trigger a warning, so let's just copy a wall just slightly on top of another one. You can see my red, my red color comes up for the warning um, as it appears. So just a way to manage color uh, in Revit. Um, we're also gonna look at Dynamo as well, because Dynamo is a little bit more difficult to change. Uh, so by default, Dynamo looks a little bit like this. So you have a, a, a gray grid on a white background, um, and then your, your node library is gray. Uh, so there's a minor amount of contrast in the interface. What we're gonna look at instead is making our background a lot darker. And we're gonna turn off our grid as well. Uh, but you'll need to do this with Dynamo closed. Uh, so what I've done is opened another session of Revit where I'll actually change the interface settings for Dynamo and then I'll boot up Dynamo itself. So I'll just close this first session. Okay, so the way that we change the background in Dynamo um, is a little bit complicated, but basically you'll need to navigate to where Dynamo is located on your C drive or whichever drive you install your programs to, uh, usually C drive. Um, so you'll do C drive, program files, Dynamo, and you need to go into Dynamo Core, and you'll need to go into your build that you're running. So I'm running on build 2, 2.0.3 uh, specifically. There'll be a subfolder called UI for user interface, and then a folder called themes, modern. And you'll be looking for this color called this file called Dynamo Color and Brushes. I recommend that you actually copy this file at this point if you want to edit it. Don't work on it uh, natively in this location. Uh, just move it to a subfolder, say here. So I've already saved a, a copy of that file here. Um, and if we open up this file, um, in this case, I'll use a program called Notepad++, which is a free program, and it's a little bit more advanced than the standard Notepad. Um, so I highly recommend it for anyone that does text file editing. Um, so you just click and drag this into Notepad++, and you'll see this file here that basically represents the color schemes in Dynamo. And there's a whole bunch of what are called um, hex codes. So you can see here that our workspace background, uh, for example, is uh, 
F9, F9, F9. So obviously, what is that color? Um, doesn't make a lot of sense to me. However, if you open, if you, I'll just open up this little file here that sort of summarizes what the hex codes mean. And I just found this on the Dynamo forums. There's a, a couple of posts where they talk about changing the background in Dynamo. So let's say we're looking for um, F, F9, 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 F9. So if we look through this list here, I believe it's in here. Actually, no, sorry, we're looking for six zeros. That's not the one that we're looking for. We'll look for the zeros. So we'll just do a control F. There we go. We're looking for our selection colors. And we're also looking for our background color as well. Um, it can take a while to find the specific nodes that you're looking for, but there's a lot of control you have over various aspects of the, the UI. So we're just going to look for our, our workspace backgrounds. I think these are our workspace background colors here. So what we want to do is we want to change our custom background for our workspace and also our background for home as well. Let's just put in the hex code for um, black at the moment. So we're just going to put in six zeros and six zeros. Okay, and we'll look through some other things and see what else we could change the background of or the color of. Because obviously you're going to have a dark grid on a black background at the moment. Um, note that the grid is automatically colorized depending on the background in Dynamo. So we're going to get quite a, a loud grid based on this color at the moment. You've also got the option to change edges, points, materials, and selections. At the moment, let's just make it all um, this blue color. So we'll make this 009 EFF. And we'll just make that our point color, our selection color, and our material color as well. Okay, so what you can do now is just save save this file, close it. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to copy this file. And I highly recommend you make a copy of this original file at this point. Um, you can always make it in the same folder, but you'll need to obviously put in your admin permission if you're not on an admin account. So what I might do is just make another copy here. And we'll just keep both files. So at this point, I'm just going to skip ahead a few seconds just so you obviously don't see my admin account and my admin password. Okay, so I've um, overwritten this file uh, using my admin password. I'm obviously not showing it to the internet. Uh, so now we should expect that if we open Dynamo, we'll have some changes in our color scheme. So I'll just open build two there. And I think the home screen stays the same, but in the working environments where we'll see the changes have occurred. So we should expect to have a black background at the moment. Uh, but obviously I could use, use a hex color for blue, for example. So it's, it's quite easy to find a, a hex code. You just look up um, hex code from RGB and there's a lot of websites that can do it. For example, just RGB to hex. Um, so they basically convert to, I guess, a color. So for example, white and we get six Fs. But if, we, for example, black and we'll get six zeros. Um, so this is a good way to find, uh, I guess, an RGB that you like and then convert it to a hex code. Anyway, so we're in Dynamo now. So if I make a new script, you'll see that immediately our background is black now. Um, so that's quite a change already. Um, obviously, black probably is a bit too extreme. I usually recommend going a uh, dark gray or something like that if you want to try a dark scheme out. That way, it's a bit easier to see the axes. And it's also not so overwhelming when you turn on the grid. So you'll see here the grid is quite overwhelming in black and white. Uh, but I find in a, a, a light gray or a dark gray, it's not so bad. Anyway, we'll just turn off our grid for now. Um, it's important to note too that some things like points aren't as easy to see, um, depending on what colors you've chosen. So I'll just make a, a points by coordinates node, and we'll just place it at, uh, say, 500 in all directions. So by default, I really can't see it. Um, I really have to select it in order to see that point, and then it's easier to see. Um, so that can take a little bit of getting used to. That's why black probably isn't the best color choice. A dark gray is because at least you can see black. Um, I find that the dark gray with the uh, black geometry is actually much better for me because it's not so straining for me to see uh, so many black or blue lines upon a white background. Um, but it all, it all comes down to user preference, obviously. Uh, one really good thing about this is that you can use the Iris package, um, which I've shown in a previous video. It's, it's available on the custom package manager. And basically the way it works is it activates this little box in the corner of all your nodes. And if you click it, you get a color wheel. And the one that's really important here is node background. So let's just say we make our node background blue. Okay. And immediately you can see what it's done. Sorry. What it's done is it's actually changed the color of the wires as well, because within 
iris itself you've got options for what you want to do so you can have uniform node colors um, but you can also have uh, by node or just off as well if you don't want to be gray uh, but at the moment i'm doing it by node and obviously uh, i can change my node colors as well to be uniform or custom anyway so uh, the, the great thing about it is that the color of the background determines the color of the the wires so it's really easy to visualize data streams when they're clashing um, so obviously this probably isn't the best example i'll just make a copy of this and let's just have some overlapping script so if this is all the same color it will be really hard to see what was what in this case but let's just make this like a blue for example it's much easier to discern where my wires are all traveling um, if i can have different colors to make that show up and obviously if, if i'm calling something out in my code much further downstream sometimes it's easier to be able to see that wire traveling to those nodes to understand where your outputs are going um, so just a, just something to be aware of. And obviously if I do a sphere by coordinates as well, or by center point radius, um, geometry at the moment, when you're in black mode, comes out in white. And I find that can be quite helpful as well when you're really trying to visualize your geometry. Um, so it just comes down to user preference, but um, just be aware it's possible. And I've had it requested multiple times, um, especially in Revit, but also occasionally in Dynamo as well. Uh, but that's pretty much all for the demonstration. Uh, feel free to play around with those settings. Uh, just remember to keep a copy of the original so that you don't lose it. Um, if, if you do, let me know. I've got copies on my site as well that I can send to you via email. But um, yeah, keep a copy if you can. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that video today. And I uh, hope you look forward to the next one, which is a much more in-depth series. Um, and if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. Um, for those that are, thanks. And good to see you again. And uh, hopefully I'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Take care. Bye.